Hello and welcome to How to Film Weddings. My name is Nick Miller, my friend John Bunn. We are here together in person. This doesn't happen very much, but today we saw something spectacular. We are in Las Vegas, Nevada. We are at the Mandalay Bay Resort Casino. We're here. WPPI 2020. It's, a, it's crazy in here. Massive showroom floor. And we, ladies and gents, were literally some of the first people in the entire world to see a brand new camera from Canon. That is the Canon EOS R5. It is real, we have seen it. We did not touch it though, no. because it is behind a glass box. So we weren't able to like pick it up and play with it. And we talked to the, the guys behind the booth and they were like, we pretty much know what you guys know, but we want to run through some of that looking at it. Um, it's, it's, I'm really excited to see what this camera can do and, and all the, all, everything about it. The first thing we want to talk about with this camera is the size. Now, right in front of it was the EOS R, which we've seen. It is a little bit bigger, a little thicker, a little bulkier from what we can tell, which I think is actually going to be really good for, for actually being able to hold it. I've held the R5 or the R, excuse me, before. It's a little thin, but this one just seems a little chunkier. So from what I'm seeing, I'm really liking the size. Yeah, and we do know that the camera will shoot in 8K. We're not exactly sure what that's gonna look like, if it's gonna be a time-lapse mode or just like 30 frames per second or something like that. We know like nothing. That. We, know we know nothing, nothing about that. But my guess is that it is a little bit bigger so that the processors inside can kind of uh, fan it a little bit better for those bigger files like that. Yeah, and so it's hidden inside of this case behind lock and key. You can kind of see it behind us. I was able to take some photos above it, around the side, and I was also able to see the back of it. We've gotten rid of the touch bar from the EOS R and back to the, uh, the, the click wheel, if you will, if you will. And the screen itself is the traditional Canon flip out screen rotated around. It's going to be amazing for vlogging. It's gonna be amazing for getting angles that you can't get with other cameras. So I'm really excited they went back to the, the actual, instead of the touch bar, it looks like it's gonna be ridiculous. Definitely. We know that this camera does have dual card slots. We don't know if that's gonna be something like two SD cards. If it has a CFast card like the 1D uh, X Mark III, we're not exactly sure. Um, and then we're not also sure if it is able to like dual record. We, we, it's definitely gonna be able to like daisy chain, meaning yeah. you know, it'll record to one card and then the next one. Uh, what the thing that I love the most about my C100 is the fact that I can record two SD cards at the exact same time. I would love it if this one would be able to do that. Uh, something that I know Sony cameras do is you can actually record one file on one card in 4K and then on the other card it's like a proxy file. So if you're shooting in 4K and your computer can't really handle that, uh, that would be great if Canon would put something like that into this camera so that you could have a bunch of proxy files edit on the smaller one and then relink them after the edit. Yeah, so that's what we know about the dual slot. I wanna talk for a second about the new RF lenses. So we were able to get a look at some of these. They are also behind the glass, but very, very interesting on these lenses. Why don't you talk a little bit about what you've seen? So the, a couple things that I've seen, one, they are beefier, like they're a lot bigger. Um, I would say that the uh, 50 millimeter 1.2 RF lens is about double the size yeah, it's, in it's like height and, and width yeah. of my Canon L 51.2. Now, I know that the 50 and the 85 are like out in the world, like you can get one of those for the R, uh, but they have a couple other lenses that um, are, are here. One is going to be the uh, 100 to 500 zoom lens. Uh, it is a 4.1 no, I'm sorry, it is a 4.5 to 7.1 uh, aperture on that. Yep. So the low light capabilities are not so great. However, it is a full frame sensor camera, so you're gonna get more light into the sensor uh, going that way. With these new lenses, I'm really excited about them being a lot smaller. One of them that I'm really excited about is the 70 to 200. I carry two of these in my bag and they take up a lot of space. And this one is about the same size as the 24 to 70, somewhere right around there. So you're losing about three inches of space and that's a lot in a bag. I do know that the when you're zooming in and out that it's going to extend the lens. It's not internal, so that, that will make a big difference. But again, I love the, the ability to be able to make it a lot smaller in my bag. Yeah. 
So now I want to talk about uh, some of the lens adapters. Uh, you do not need to buy new lenses for these cameras. If you're already shooting on Canon glass, uh, you can attach the EF mounts with an adapter to the uh, R or now the R5 that's getting ready to come out this summer, we think. Yep. Um, a, a neat thing that if you are actually using uh, the your uh, EF mount lenses is there's an adapter and with that you can attach a variable ND filter. So if you don't upgrade your lenses and we know uh, that, you know, seeing the prices on the RF mount lenses, they are more expensive. I know the 70 to 200 is about $600 more. Yep. I think the 50 is about $500 more. So they they are definitely more expensive lenses. Uh, if, so if you don't want to update, you can, or upgrade your lenses, you can use this adapter. Uh, they do have a variable ND filter that you can use with your RF lenses, which that is something that I will definitely miss going to a new camera system is the built-in ND filters. And if I'm continuing to use my EF mount lenses, I will have an ND filter built in that I can use. It goes camera body, then these uh, uh, the filters, which has the adapter so that I can use the RF lens on the other side. Yeah, it's gonna be a perfect solution for me as a C100 Mark II user to still use the glass I want to use and then have built-in ND filters um, to use for you know all of my current lenses. So super pumped about that. Now, do we wanna talk about when it's gonna ship or when we think it's gonna ship? All, yes, um, there, there's a bunch of you know Canon rumor sites and all that stuff. We. July summer seems to be uh, what they're thinking. Now we don't know if that's going to be like ship date. We don't know if that's going to be like official announcement date. We're not exactly sure, but it seems to be June, July, August, somewhere in that time frame is when this camera will will know everything about it and it might start making it out into the world. Yeah, and we don't know that exactly. We don't know much more exactly, except for the hands-on kind of look that we got at it today. It looks like it's going to be the perfect camera for me to switch from the C100 Mark II finally, and I know a lot of people are really excited to, to see it. We don't know the price yet. I'm going to guess it's going to be somewhere in like the 3000 to 4000 range, but again, we don't know with the 8K capabilities, what the crop is going to be, what it's actually going to do is going to determine a lot of that, but we do think that this is a camera that is going to compete with the other mirrorless cameras out there, and as a Canon user that has been sitting on the sidelines, waiting and waiting and waiting. Definitely. This is a very exciting day for us. I am really excited about the announced IBIS in it oh so gosh, that I can yes. go handheld and not have to worry about shaking and all that stuff. The The internal stabilization is going to be simply a life changer for me and my business. And I cannot wait to play with this camera and see what it does in person. All right, so that is what we know so far about the Canon EOS R5. We are so excited to get our hands on it and check it out. We're going to be doing a lot more YouTube content on our channel, um, and we're really going to be doing a lot more of this kind of stuff. So do us a favor, like this video, share, subscribe, and we will see you in the next video. See ya.